Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to discuss the forces of filtration which occur within the glomerulus. The forces we are going to be talking about are the forces that drive fluid and solutes out of the blood across the glomerular capillary membranes and into the Bowman's capsule. You may have seen these forces elsewhere in capillary circulation. They are often called Starling's forces. Now in order to illustrate these, I'll begin by drawing a glomerulus. You can see the afferent arteriole here, and the efferent arteriole here. And of course in between them is the glomerular capillaries. And out here, we have Bowman's capsule. There are two types of forces at work here. The first is called hydrostatic pressure, which I'll write as a P with a small h. And this is a force that compels a fluid to move out of the vessel because it is contained within a vessel. To understand this, imagine a balloon with a small hole in it. As you blow up the balloon, there is more pressure within the balloon, and thus, more air will move out of the small hole. The same is true for capillary hydrostatic pressure. The larger the volume of blood within the capillaries, and the higher the blood pressure, the more quickly fluid will move through the capillary walls and into the surrounding tissue. The second important force here is the oncotic pressure, sometimes called the colloid oncotic pressure. This is usually denoted pi. This is a type of osmotic force which is exerted on fluids by the presence of proteins in the blood and tissues. Also, we'll use these forces to determine the net pressure moving fluid out of the glomerulus and into the Bowman's capsule. I'll denote this P net. So there are three forces acting here. The first is the hydrostatic pressure of the blood which forces fluid out of the capillaries and into the Bowman's capsule. The second is the hydrostatic pressure of the filtrate, and this pressure compels fluid to move back into the capillaries. This can be a bit confusing, so I'll explain a bit further. Any fluid that is contained within a space exerts hydrostatic pressure on the boundaries of that space. So when the blood is filtered, and the filtrate collects within the Bowman's capsule, the filtrate exerts pressure on the boundaries of the Bowman's capsule and the capillary bed within the capsule. As I said before, this compels fluid to move back into the capillary bed. The final force is the oncotic pressure, which also compels fluid back into the capillary bed. This is the osmotic force that the proteins in the blood exert on the fluid in the filtrate. Note that there is no oncotic force in the other direction, and this is because under normal circumstances there should not be any significant amount of protein in the filtrate. Now for some specifics. In a normal healthy adult, the hydrostatic pressure of the blood in the capillaries is about 55 millimetres of mercury on average. The hydrostatic pressure of the filtrate is about 15 millimetres of mercury. And the oncotic pressure is about 30 millimetres of mercury. This gives us a net pressure driving fluid out of the glomerular capillaries of about 10 millimetres of mercury. Now I'll show you how that net pressure is calculated from those other pressures. The net pressure is the force out minus the force back into the capillaries. So if we substitute in our pressures, this gives us the hydrostatic pressure of blood minus the sum of the hydrostatic pressure of filtrate and the oncotic pressure, and then substituting our actual values into the equation and then solving gives us 10 millimetres of mercury. And that's an overview of the forces of filtration. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please help us produce more by making a donation at 
www.handwrittentutorials.com.